morning, it's 8.30, welcome to my vineyard ramble. Um, as you can see, I'm up near the rock. So I'll just tell you exactly what this rock is, the significance of the rock for those of you who don't know. Um, just first, the location. So for those of you who've got the tea towel, tea towels at the ready, here we go. So I'm standing, it's called Puy de la Gardie, is the vineyard and the Colombier, so Puy de la Gardie, if you've got your tea towels at the ready. And over in the distance, I'm looking at the Roussillon, so you can see the village of Touchon in the forefront, and then behind that, the village of Paziol. It's a really cloudy day today, but if you look over here, this is uh, the Rocher de Vangro, Vangro, so Vangro and Totavel over in this direction. You can't see much today because of the cloud. Um, over behind these rocks here is the Mediterranean. So the Mediterranean beaches of Le Cat, uh, La Palme, La Franqui, and then round behind the olive tree, up here in this direction. Can we see the Chateau d'Aguila today? Um, it's disappeared. Oh, no. Well, if you can make it out, it's, it's not in the cloud, but it's very grey over there. And then Narbonne down in this direction here. Pan round, here's a lovely Garrigue countryside, so the wild scrubland, Garrigue, that's called Garrigue, and it's made up of rosemary and thyme. And then round, and this is the, what you can see of the Tosh mountain. So the Tosh mountain does actually go up to um, 900 meters, you can probably see up to about 500 meters today, and then the rest is hidden in cloud. So this cloud, it's, um, it's actually coming off the Mediterranean, so it's a marin, it's the sea breeze, so the marin, and the marin breeze, it's not very nice, it makes your baguettes go floppy. So I actually know what wind it is when Jean-Marc brings the baguettes home in the morning from the bakery, from the boulangerie, I know what the weather's like, because on a day like this, it's a very sort of humid wind that comes off the sea and it makes all the baguettes go floppy. So definitely floppy baguette day today. It also makes your hair go really frizzy, your washing doesn't dry, and it's not great for the vines either. Uh, for the vines, it can, it doesn't help with uh, fungal disease like odium and mildew. This is like perfect weather. It's about 20 degrees here. It's going to get up to 27 and that's quite good still for odium uh, and mildew. I think we're over the worst with the mildew now, so it's odium and you may... I was just sitting on the rock and you can see everybody is out this morning. All these vineyards you can see, most of them belong to uh, members of the local cooperative in the village. Here. So it's just a sea of vines, but there are lots of little tractors going about their business and spraying with sulphur this morning to try and stop an attack of odium. But back to the rock. Any questions you have, please put them in the little question box uh, at the bottom of the screen and then I can pick them up at the end. I do miss comments sometimes if they just come up on the screen. I can see lots of comments about the floppy baguettes. <laughs> Um, so this is the rock and if I'm here today it's just to say that tomorrow evening uh, I'm going to be out on this rock with Jean-Marc and we will be tasting the Carignan. So we do a Friday evening tasting, it's at 8 o'clock, uh, that's French time, so it's 7, no it's not, it's 8.30, I'll put it up, 8.30 French time, 7.30 UK time in the evening tomorrow and we do a tasting from the rock and tomorrow we're going to be tasting Carignan. So I thought it would be nice just to bring you up and show you two different types of Carignan. I'm actually in Jean-Marc's vineyard to start off with this morning. So this is Jean-Marc's Carignan. And we're basically going to walk all the way down the hill and we're going to look at my old vine Carignan at the bottom. So this is Jean-Marc's, which is about 20 years old, the Carignan here. Now, I'm not sure how much you know about Carignan, the history. There's so much of it. This was like the most widely planted grape variety uh, in Touchon and Paziol in our valley. It's definitely Carignan Valley up here. So I can see somebody asking exactly what odium is. Um, I just a quick, quick interlude on odium. So odium is actually, it's a fungal disease. So similar to mildew, it's a fungal disease, which is actually on top of the leaves rather than being inside the leaves. So you can actually get rid of it with sulfur. So uh, we're organic, 100% organic, and we can spray a very fine powder. It's basically powdering sulphur on to get rid of a fungal disease called odium. 
So look at these grapes. So these are Jean-Marc's bunches, aren't they? Massive, lovely bunches of Carignan, looking really, really good here. And he's a trellist on the white. So back to Carignan. Um, this was the traditional grape planted here. Uh, in the village of Touchon and Paziol. Um, it then diversified a little bit when they started to plant Grenache, but people love Carignan. It's so adapted to the soils and to the climate. It's really drought resistant, so it loves the heat, it loves the lack of water. But what people liked about it most was that it produces loads and loads of grapes. So Carignan, Carignan I think, um, can produce some of the best wine in the world, definitely, but it can also produce some of the worst wine. So before it used to be hidden in like blends like Corbiere. Most of the Corbiere used to be made from Carignan. Still a high percentage of it is made from Carignan and Fitu as well. A lot of Fitu is actually made from the Carignan grape. So even though you may never have heard of Carignan, you've probably been drinking it if you've drunk Corbiere or Fitu before. I'm just looking at this. Anybody got any idea? what this is. If you remember the, que the question competition today as well, I'll ask you a question at the end on something that I've been talking about and the first person to reply gets a free sachet of herbs from this very vineyard. Anybody any idea who lives down here? <laughs> I could make the noise it makes but I'm not quite sure what noise it makes. Rabbits, no, it'd be a very big rabbit. Big boar, no. Not wild boar, Auntie Jane. Uh, hi Robin, just made it. Uh, oh, what's that? A rabbit? No, a hare? No. Hi Naked Mother, good to see you with us. A deer? No. So there's one hole here. If I put my, f I don't want to put my foot too close to it to get an idea of scale. Snake? No. Badger! Nikki, you got it. So under here, there's a whole network of badger holes. Uh, which is not great when Jean-Marc's on the tractor. Uh, it just, I mean, it's quite dangerous as well because it could actually collapse. But talking about Jean-Marc, guess what? He was meant to be with me this morning, but the tractor's broken down again. So I'm showing you his Carignan vines, planted about 20 years ago, uh, farmed organically. And as you can see, he's trained them on wires. And as you can see, I was wondering why I'm walking through these branches. This is a thinning out that we've been doing. So the team have been up here thinning out the vines and that's just to make sure that these lovely grapes here get lots of sunshine, that they get a nice equal amount of sunshine and, so, and the air can circulate around them um, so that they ripen evenly. And that's now the big challenge is to get all of these lovely gra grapes to ripen evenly now. So just taking off some of the shoots helps with that. So a quick look at the terroir. So for those of you who followed, you know how to say terroir. It's terroir is terre, like to tear a bit of paper, ooh, a bit of paper, and then wah, terroir. So, and what is terroir? That is the big question that people have been asking themselves forever. It's a French term with no English direct translation. Terroir basically is all of this. It's the soil. It's these vines, it's the weather, it's the village, it's the, the sense of place. It's like all of these things captured in a wine. And that is our job, Jean-Marc and mine, is to try and capture all of this terroir, terroir, and to get it in the bottle. And tomorrow night we're going to taste the Carignan. And I think that expresses so much the terroir from this area. Terroir is not just the soil. So sometimes people think terre because terroir, terre means earth in French. It's actually based just on the soil, but it's not. It's a whole lot more. It's a terroir. It's the whole thing. It's even people. It's like the people that live here, the customs. It's the herbs that we have in the uh, Garrigue landscape I mentioned, the rosemary and the thyme, they find their way somehow, they come into the flavor of the wines as well. So just a look up the hill here as I come down. So I'm gonna take you down here and we're going to go and look at some of my 110 year old Carignan vines, just to compare the size of the bunches. It's a lovely stone wall here. 
that was made by Jean-Marc. So Carignan used to be so popular, as I um, said, it was really popular in the south of France because it produces so many grapes. So people loved it. And when there was this big demand for wine, from mainly from the industrial north, but even from workers down here, Carignan did the job, did it really well because it was just big, big yields so they could make lots of wine. And when you think like, even today, if you're thinking of doing the harvest, if you hand pick, the people that pick the grapes are allowed an allowance of two litres of wine a day. So on top of their wages, they also get two litres of wine a day. Uh, and if you're actually carrying what they call like the hod on the back that the buckets of grapes go into, um, you can get four litres. You're allowed four litres of wine. And that's based on what workers used to drink before previously um, but that's still we still have to uh, put that into the wage slips and during the harvest is this a uh, wine allowance um, but and that would have been mainly from the Carignan grapes so big production when people used to drink lots of wine now uh, wine consumption has dropped dramatically in France and uh, so a lot of the Carignan has actually been ripped up and replaced with other grape varieties, sort of more classic grape varieties like uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, and that's I'm talking down on the plain because here, the plain near Nalbon, because here in Touchon you can't grow anything apart from the traditional grape varieties. Traditional grape varieties carry Nyon Grenache because they're drought resistant uh, and they like the wind as well. So it's really adapted and it's very difficult to grow anything else. So just a quick look at, a, this is a Syrah Vignon. You can see the soil here has already changed. So the soil, it's, gone, it's sort of a white color. So a bit of chalk in there, a bit of marl, marl stone coming down here. For those of you who've been uh, following, you might know which vineyard is coming up on the right hand side down here, uh, especially if you've got your tea towels at the ready, you can have a look. But there is one little vineyard that we were in last week. If you haven't seen them, all of the videos are on YouTube, so you can actually catch up on YouTube and take a look back at all of the videos. We're in the ninth week now, so there's a whole lot of videos for you to have a look at here. So Carignan yeah, basically fell out of favour. It's no longer in the top 10 most widely planted grape varieties in France. Um, but it then made a sort of renaissance. Made a renaissance because if you have old vine Carignan with really, really low yields, or if you can really control those yields, you can get a really, really good quality of wine you can get a fantastic quality of wine and that's what we're tasting tomorrow on the rock the carignan so for those of you here you may recognize the macab or somebody mentioned macab lisa i don't know if that was just coincidence but yes this is the macab vineyard that we saw gilles spreading this sort of mulched wood it smells absolutely gorgeous i think it must be the i think it was juniper wood here if that exists, but it smells absolutely gorgeous. So we're waiting to see if that's going to stop the weeds growing and if it's going to keep the moisture in the soil. Keep going, ooh, I'm running further than I thought to get down to my vineyard. So that was Jean-Marc's vineyard at the top. And then we're just going to come down here and take a quick peek at my old vine Carignan. So Carignan quality really dependent on the yield. So old vines naturally, have a lower yield. And then Jean-Marc on his younger vines, he's planted them, as you see, right at the top of the hill. So the soils are poorer. He also prunes it right back so that he has less bunches of grapes. So he keeps the yield really low as well. So we would produce between 25 and 35 hectolitres per hectare to get the style of wine that we want. If that doesn't mean much to people, it's this might not mean much any, uh, either, but it's about 3,500 bottles per hectare. And uh, Carignan, if you're down on the plain, can produce up to 26,000. So, you know, here we're really low yields, and this is where you really get some superb Carignan quality. So, here, just coming down here, I can see where Mignon's been in action 
Um, so this is now into my old vine, 110 years old here. Let's go and say hello this morning to the carignan. Now this is, it's mainly carignan, but it's a vine that's mixed up with carignan uh, and some Grenache as well. So let's see what we can spot. So you can already see here, um, here's a lovely typical carignan leaf again. So five lobes, serrated edges um, and a very dark embossed leaf, dark green. And on the back, tiny little hairs on the back. And here you can see the bunches of grapes, so much smaller. You remember those? Uh, um, it's only like two minutes ago, but the ones we saw for Jean-Marc at the top, much bigger bunches. So very small, perhaps looser bunches down here on the old vine, on my Domaine Jones old vine Carignan. So we don't mix the Carignan up. Jean-Marc makes his own wine from his Carignan vines, and I make my old vine Carignan from my old vines down here. So we keep them very separate. Here's another one. See here, so much smaller bunches. And again, not trellis, you can see. So this was how they were planted 110 years ago, a horse width apart. So this is where Mignon the tractor has been doing some lovely ploughing down the rows and uh, we can't get a traditional tractor in here so there'd be no point putting these on wires and I wouldn't really want to stress the vines now they're in their retirement by trying to get them to grow up onto wires. And the soil, it's a completely different soil. So, so carrying on really, it can make a van ordinaire so it can make really sort of ordinary quality wine, but it can also make a vin extraordinaire. And that's what we'll be tasting tomorrow. So time is up on the ramble. Let's take a look at your questions. Also, I just want to mention um, for Joe, si a big shout out for Joe Simon. Joe Simon, uh, hi Joe. And Joe follows us most mornings on the ramble and she's helps me with the bird spotting as well. But Joe's just written a lovely piece on the Carignan Gris on her website. So um, if you look at joannasimon.com and Joe, if you want to put the tag up on the screen, please, please do. Uh, there's a lovely write up on the Carignan Gris. So the gray type, the very rare gray type of Carignan. So thanks very much for that, Joe. So take a look at your questions. So one from Liam. How many more years will the old vines produce grapes? This is the big question, isn't it? I mean, you can see here, there's like a, big, a bit of a gap where some of them have just fallen off the edge. But these old 110 year old vines, um, they're still producing lots of grapes. And um, the oldest vine is about 400 years old and it's still producing grapes. So I'm really hopeful that these, as long as they keep going just another 20 years or so, that will be, that's enough for me. That will be fantastic. And when you look, I mean, look at this one. All of these lovely grapes here. And this is how we want them. We saw gobelet. This, the, the method of pruning is called gobelet. And this is a really good example that all the grapes, you see they're hanging around the outside almost like a sort of gobelet glass shape. They're not all bunched up and concentrated in the middle of the vine, which would lead to rot. So thanks very much for that question, Liam. Oh, another one from Liam. Do badgers attack the vines like the wild boars? They don't, I've never seen a badger here. I've just seen where they live, but I've never actually seen them. We've talked about the odium. Are there any roads, Nick? Yeah, this is a um, good question. Are there any roads to the top of the Tosh? There, there's one road that takes you to the top of the Tosh. And what I was thinking for next week, um, I might try and get the Diane up the top of the Montoche. What do you think? If I can drive the, the Diane, my Citroen Diane, 
to the top of the Tosh mountain, 900 meters, would you follow me? Would you sit in the back seat? <laughs> That's the question. So if you're up for that, I'll be doing that next week if you think it's a good idea. Uh, one on picking dates. Is the old Vine Canyon picked at the same time as the younger bunches? Approximately. It tends to be the, the old vine takes a little longer to ripen because uh, we're down here a bit lower down where Jean Marx is like, sort of on the sunny side of the hill and on the hill. So his ripens a little bit earlier. He machine picks. So literally he can go and he'd um, pick that in a couple of hours. This plot down here, which is less than half a hectare, it will be hand picked. And this would take uh, probably two mornings to actually come in and pick it. But um, so mine all hand picked. So approximately the same time, perhaps a, a week's difference in the picking date. <laughs> Uh, Nikki just asking if uh, Christine has found a husband yet in uh, one of the previous one in the Muscat um, in the Muscat vineyard um, we asked we did a quick interview with Christine it was like the farmer needs a wife and um, I don't think she has actually Christine has not found a husband yet so please send the photos in and then a final question from Nikki uh, Nikki says, where's your Mark? Where is your Mark? Uh, well, I think I mentioned it actually. He's meant to be, he was going to come and join us and say hello. He'll definitely be here tomorrow evening for the tasting. Unfortunately, the tractor's broken down, the trailer's fallen off the back in the middle of the village as well. So I'm not quite sure what's happening there. I will go and find out in a minute. But um, that's it for my vineyard ramble this morning. Thanks ever so a lot for joining. Great to see all of you here. So no vineyard ramble tomorrow morning, but wine on the rock tomorrow evening. Look forward to seeing you then. Thanks everybody. Bye.